Seeing it's 6.30 p.m. on October 8, 2024, I'm going to call the meeting to order for the Hadley Conservation Commission. First on the agenda tonight is request for determination of applicability. 89 Hockenham Road has been continued. Tory Field seeks approval for a shed located in the 35-foot no dessert zone. And they haven't been coming to the last meetings. No. We've kept continuing it. And K.O. says unless we get notification when they want to withdraw, we have to keep it open until April. We have to keep it open. So if somebody doesn't voluntarily withdraw, we have to continue it to the next meeting. We can continue it like six months ahead and just do that a few times until it expires. Nobody's here for them right now. No, I don't no, think no. so. Is anybody here for the 89 Hockenham RDA? Does not sound like it. When's the last time they were here? I think the last time she came on Zoom was two or three meetings ago. Yeah. At least. At least. And Six Every months week. from today is April 8th. So next, that's our meeting in April. So I'll, I'll look for a, make a motion to continue it until April 8th. You make a motion to continue it to April 8th. Yeah, revisit. Yeah, revisit. makes a motion. We have a second. Second. Be seconds in. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All five members. Next on the agenda is a notice of intent 170-300. That's the DEP file number for UMass Geothermal Wells. The University of Massachusetts seeks to install geothermal wells in an existing paved parking lot. Work will, play, work will take place primarily in Amherst with the installation of four electric vehicle charging stations proposed in Hadley. All work will take place in the 100-foot buffer zone. <clears throat> is who's here to present for that tonight? You can do what's here tonight. Okay. What's the best format for us to be seen on the camera? Well, do you want me to um, screen share the files that are on your flash drive? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, if you want to come a little closer to the, the mic. You can. Uh, Kayla and I were off site. <clears throat> we, you can share with the rest of the board members. You know, basically, what's going to be happening and have yes. and what the impacts are and what you're doing to mitigate. This is the one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm Jason Vendity, uh, proud uh, Hadley resident and mm -hmm. here tonight to represent the uh, campus from UMass. I have with me Eric Wilhelmsen, who is from CDW. They are the consultant to uh, going to most of the presentation uh it's north side of governor's drive it is an existing parking lot lot that we are proposing as part of our campus admission to go um carbon neutral and mitigate carbon we have an effort that we're going to do is which is to feed two buildings with a geothermal well field which after many option selections came down to being that we decided to go with the inside the footprint of an existing parking lot because we thought it would be best. This parking lot that was kind of deteriorated anyway, so we figured go out to that parking lot, do the geothermal wells in it and then rehab it is with minor modifications. We did do uh, a group meeting and I appreciate uh, Kim this time with working with Aaron from the town of Commission because we're protecting our inhabitants. So we've done a couple joint meetings, which has been beneficial to allow us to have that kind of kickoff, and it's good to have that relationship with both town and concoms. That's the existing part of uh, the magenta line is the town line where the top side is Amherst, the lower half is in Hadley. Uh, highlighted the the well and boundary in the uh, various bet, but stays zoomed out so we can see the whole thing. So for
corrosion control, we have sort of sort of up and down pavement section. If you scroll down a little bit, you see that little piece of red that sort of extends further to the bottom of the page, and that's where the uh, vehicle chargers are, are going, right in there. As you so clearly, you know, most of the work is in Amherst with like four or five vehicle chargers in, in actual cattle. Um, let's put on two pages, I think. So we'll, next one. Keep going. She's going. Oh, okay. so, slightly. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is probably the, the yeah, that, that slide there is probably the best one to look at to see the, the extent of all the, the geothermal wells, uh, the utilities that are sort of running off to all the geothermal wells. Everything's surrounded by that erosion control area. And then you can see just south of the, or below the magenta line right there, the uh, vehicle chargers. It's the vehicle chargers are being installed on the, you know, up, above the curb line. And that erosion control barrier goes basically right, right along the curb line. And that's pretty much the extent of the work in hand. Just to be clear, what we're looking at here. So the purple mm -hmm. is the wells, but the purple big lines that you're seeing, and then that head to the south, hard to tell is north. North is to the left. Correct. Are heading towards our existing chiller plant that we have on campus. Yeah. We're going to repurpose one day of that for energy exchange center. So the wells are going to go into the existing chiller plant, allow that to connect to that system, and push out to the rest of the campus. So most. The work that you're seeing here that's shown to the red line, that's existing berm line that's already there. So uh, our goal is to maintain the existing parking lot. But the, the red barrier that we're talking about there is the existing curb line. Mm -hmm. The parking lot pavement is not expanding and staying the same size. They're just going to dig it all up to put in all those geothermal wells and it's going right back the way. So where the curb line is, it goes up. Is it actually a berm? Before it comes back down into the wetland. So it's almost like a natural. On the left and on the right, yeah. It is, it's, it's, so the parking lot is lower than the berm. And another, so it helps them in, uh, with a lot of the erosion control. So the, you're putting what? Siltation fence or something on top of the berm? Oh, yeah. Sock. It's uh, milk filled. It's not too, yeah. So. But we see like it's pretty contained as it is. Yeah, when you walk it, it makes total sense yeah. when you see it. So, well, two things are going on. Is it certificate correct, Kayla? Yeah. Oh, yeah, lot 26, yeah. yes. Lot 26 is on the lower, lower lot. And yeah. we're part of the. I agree. That Kayla reached out. So, lot 26 is a lot. So, anybody who drives Governor's Drive, north of our campus, there's two big, big parking lots. Actually, it's three. There's one more. In our conditions, we've been following. But we have not filed a certificate of uh, compliance yet. Legion. So we still owe the town a COC on that, which we're in process for. So I was going to read that so today. We, we so keep, we're in process of doing that. We've done. And number two, since Amherst, a lot of the work's being done in Amherst, but they're, they're Doing orders and conditions that are going to protect the Hadley wetlands, correct? Because mm -hmm. it's in the buffer zone. So they're having their meeting tomorrow night. So that's another reason we're going to, we're going to, want to continue it until the next month. So we can incorporate some of their order conditions into ours as well, if we need be. Right, Taylor? Thanks. Yeah. And I think we could do the COC and the order conditions in the same meeting. Yeah. If that yeah. works. Yeah. 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 So, so the second one, lot 26. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Northwest corner of campus. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we did that a few years ago. You were a former. So it's good catch. Why not just keep the four charging stations in Amherst and kind of yeah. deal instead of dealing with. We thought, you know, I, I hear you, Steve. It's a, I, we got, um, it's basically because of the. Workers in have been Amherst, but they're the Amherst ones. Mm -hmm. like, Got it. Out of respect, let's just tell both towns this is what. Oh, 
we're doing. Yep. Here's we are. You guys are drive by here and see all the work. It's like, oh my gosh, the right next to it's just it makes sense to us to mm -hmm. do both towns. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. You said yeah. Okay, all five board members said yes. I'll see. So I'll do that with you. With the CSC. Yes. Yeah. Well, indeed, yeah. We. Right now, I'm okay, great. Nope. Yeah, I didn't know if, C if um, SWCA maybe had the records of something. Like BHP, it. who did the filing, or oh, like okay. IRS. Okay. Getting okay. Is there any, uh, w Dish Maintenance, the Hadley Department of Public Works seeks to perform maintenance on several agricultural ditches in town. Wait, hold on. I'm I got kicked out of the venue for a second. Oh, okay. But I think that's fine. It's good. Okay. Should I start over again or? Nick, are we good? Yeah. Okay. So the Halley Department of Public Works seeks to perform maintenance on several agricultural ditches in town. Maintenance will include mowing and the removal of sediment. And who is going to present for that tonight? This is Nick Cristofori from Comprehensive Environmental CEI. Yeah. All set? Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening. Thank you. Uh, so again, my name is Nick Christofori from Comprehensive Environmental CEI on behalf of the Town of Hadley DPW. Uh, tonight, we are seeking approval for a request for determination of applicability to perform some localized maintenance on some agricultural ditches within town. Um, this particular filing is is an almost, almost duplicative filing of what was done back uh, five years ago. Um, so back then, I worked previously with the town of DPW director at the time, Chris Okafor, uh, to essentially assess some of the ditches within town and come up with a prioritization for maintenance. And at the time, we looked at something like at least a desktop analysis of something like 20-ish miles of ditch. Ditch. We're not getting and, your voice um, very well. Yeah, I, you guys have been kind of cutting out too. Um. Let me see if I mute. Maybe see if I shot a video. A little better. Yeah, that's, that's better, I think. Okay. Uh, let me try this. So, so um, we so tried cool. to narrow it down from about twenty miles of ditches to about five miles of ditches, which it which was previously approved back in two thousand nineteen, and maintenance at the time involved fairly straightforward things. It was mostly um, mowing with some localized sediment removal. Nick, is your internet spotty? Because mine is spotty on my laptop. Yeah. Same. Hang on, Nick. we got a problem here. Okay, hold on. I've never never had an issue. Um, which net? Are you on the guest one? Yes. Oops. Seems like the staff one doesn't have. Can't get this volume. We're, we're going to continue the whole thing. Yeah. Can't have a meeting.
Should we try? Really try. I mean, you're right now. It's so. Uh, okay. Wait. Um. No. Nick, on Zoom. Can you try talking? Yeah, hello? I hear something coming out here, but not very much. Yeah, I, I, you know, you guys keep kind of breaking up, cutting in and out, too. You there, Nick? I, I am here so much. Nick, I can hear you perfect. Whatever oh, the problem you, okay. is. Yeah, whatever the problem is, uh, is on their end. Should I try? Try connecting to like a hotspot, Nick. Do you think that would help? Okay, let's try it. Any better? We can't. It feels really, so unstable. We, we just can't do anything with the audience because the people uh, can't hear us. On you know, what if we just use my computer and didn't put on the projector? We just need volume. Well, we did that last time, didn't we? Mm -hmm. What do you recommend? Yeah, not sure. Um, so. So Nick, can you hear us at all right now? I can hear you. It, it kind of works and then kind of cuts in and out. So I sing that spot when it comes out. Mm -hmm. Maybe you play this is yeah. it's the interaction production. Oh, what? So I, I go. Yeah. Is this something that's going to be can be fixed at another time, or is it just just tonight, or is it? Yeah. 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 yeah they can communicate to us. I wonder, Nick, can you hear us enough? Like I, I can hear you pretty well, actually. It, this this seems better than it was previously. But can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. So I'll stay on the hotspot then, and, and we'll keep going. All right, Nick. Do you want to continue the? Um... Start from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Nick Christopher from CEI on behalf of the town of Hadley DPW, uh, we are filing a RDA tonight to perform ditch maintenance. Um, this will be selective mowing and sediment removal along some agricultural ditches within town. Um, maintenance on these ditches was last performed about five years ago when uh, we did some work with the previous DPW director. And um, again, maintenance was fairly basic. It was mowing and some limited sediment removal. Um, since then, no work has been done on these ditches, but the, the town uh, DPW and Board of Selectmen have expressed an, an interest on sort of getting ahead on some of these maintenance issues, not issues really, but, you know, just getting ahead on some of this maintenance that, that hasn't been done, at least certainly not recently. So um, because of the relatively short 
time frame, the, it being already October, the town wants to get something done this year as best as possible. So um, in speaking with Kayla previously, she indicated that if we were to essentially refile the RDA from five years ago for the same areas um, that the board would entertain the the proposed RDA. And again, I mean, pretty much all of these are within agricultural exemption areas. I mean, they're they're right right behind farm fields. Um, it is my understanding that Kayla, you and Ian from my office, and I believe Scott met yesterday and sort of refined a couple of these areas. Um, I know you removed one of the areas that it isn't really agricultural, and another area that um, that doesn't really need maintenance. So I think they've been refined kind of slightly, but you know, the intent is really the same. These are, these are agricultural ditches. They were permitted um, five years ago and the town's really just looking, looking to get out there, cut the brush that hasn't been cut in five years. And then we're thinking that there may be some fairly limited sediment removal that for whatever reason has accumulated over the, the last five years. But we don't think it's going to be quite as intensive as it was when it was done in 2019. Um, and that's essentially the project. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to beat this thing into the ground too much. So, um, certainly, any questions, we, please let me know. We permitted before. This is almost like a renewal, and we've got the we got the RDA before the what we use for issuance. So there was just a few changes that I had discussed with Ian in the field, and then I talked to Scott about today. Um, which, if you, I, I only have one of the paper copies, and I, I know Ray. You have it on your mm -hmm. iPad. It's all one. They're all it's all together. Different maps. So there's four different maps. Yeah. Um, the one that is being removed because it doesn't need maintenance is 1A at the top. Um, that one's pretty clear. Doesn't need to be Listen. maintained. Um, 1B, agricultural, pretty simple. And then 2C, um, DEP recommended removing the part at least removing the part that's in the residential area so in 2c yeah so you see the part that goes past like sunrise drive yeah mm -hmm. so that's going to be removed as long as scott you find that acceptable um and it's just going to be the parts all the way to the south where the field is and then all the way to the north um and then the other alteration is for ditch 3A, which goes, which is next to the Lowe's. Um, instead of maintaining that part that kind of goes west, there's a part that goes south. And I think, Scott, that is what you, the DPW has been maintaining, and it's by a well site, I believe. Um, so there's just that small alteration there. So you're, wait a minute, so you're not going to look to go on lows on the no, low side the low side is going to be maintained until it crosses route nine, nine and then instead of going to the west they're going to maintain to the south of that so like this down here got it oh instead okay instead of this part yep yep, yep. yep. okay it's like next to that storage area i think is what it is yeah, All right. yeah, so, yeah. So we're next to our yeah. pump station there it just runs from uh mill valley to route nine there there's a uh, sewer manhole there we just maintain between our property and uh, uh, Megan's Valley and split excavating there we have a little right away okay so do we have the radiation before yeah so yeah. the special conditions for the original determination um, I don't think we need to include all of them so I'll just read the ones that I think that we should include in this permit uh, number one, DPW staff and contractors shall follow the procedures described in the request for determinations project description. Includes This includes their mini excavator, rakes, shovels, and similar equipment. Number two, DPW staff and contractors shall ensure that the cleaning of the ditches does not make any ditch deeper or wider than the original depth and width. Um, the work must maintain the geometry of the ditch and ensure that flow is not blocked or worsened by uneven topography at the bottom of the ditch. Number three, the DPW must receive written permission from each property owner before work can be done on that property owner's section of the ditch. Um, four would be any areas disturbed by the work outside of, I guess, I don't know if this one, any areas disturbed by the work shall be stabilized and revegetated with appropriate seed mix. And then five, 
The DPW shall notify the Conservation Commission when they complete the sec different sections of the selected ditches and streams. Um, and number six, this determination, this is just the expiration date would be October 8th, 2027. After that, the town will have to file a new permit application for continued work. Mm -hmm. And so the original determination was a negative two, five, and six, but I think that we should do a five, negative five and six and not do a negative two. What's the difference? The negative two says that the uh, proposed work will not alter resource area, um, but five says that it's an, there's an exemption for the work, which is, this is filed under kind of like the agricultural exemption, so we just need that one. Mm -hmm. And then six is the bylaw. I mean, we, we, we wouldn't hurt anything by checking two though, right? Well, it doesn't really make sense because it kind of is altering resource areas, but it's exempt because it's agriculture. Well, so just do five and six. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to look for a motion to uh, close the hearing. I'll make it. Gordon, make the motion. I got second my seat. Any further discussions? All favor, aye. 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 All five agreed. So we're going to propose a negative five and negative six determination. Any other uh, notes with that to go with that? Um, with the special conditions read as read? And with the special conditions that you read earlier? Do we have a motion for that? I'll make it. Gordon makes a motion. I'll second it. Like Brandon. Any further discussion? All right. Quick question. Okay. So Scott's gonna gonna let you know. I mean, when the DPW is doing the work, they're gonna give give you a notification. Yeah. Was that was that one of the, the conditions? The condition is for the DPW to notify the Conservation Commission as we complete the different section of, of the selected. But that's afterwards. How about before? And we can change it to before if that's better. Before, before and after. Just, yeah. So that way you, you're aware if you get a phone right. call what's going on. Okay. Right. That sounds good. Scott, okay. does that sound good to you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a, my question. Gary, as far as the permission goes, if we have legal easements through there, do we still need to get permission from owners? Because we kind uh, you know, we have right of ways. It's probably a better idea than yeah. not to get get your uh, get the neighbor's permission, or just tell at least tell them what's going on. Make them aware because it's, it's going to be it's going to be. If you got to ask the farmers, you got to ask the landlord. Yeah, yeah. same thing. Yeah, I would think. Yeah, Scott, Scott, how exactly did you come up with these particular ditches in question that you want to dig? Yeah. Was it just mm -hmm. the worst ones of the worst? Or? <sighs> yeah, Brandon, it was the worst ones of the worst back with the prior. Uh, director that we we found in that area, and uh, at our a uh, couple of select board meetings ago, I brought this uh, ditch situation up in front of the uh, board, and uh, they they want to look at the whole town overall uh, and come up with a you know a little better game plan and prioritize uh, what's going on and. Uh, try to, you know, figure out what our next steps are. Uh, so uh, I know Nick from CEI is working on a game plan to come up with a cost analysis of what it's going to take to uh, do an assessment of the overall ditch situation uh, through the entire right. town. But this, this one area here that we did some legwork on before was just kind of quick and easy to continue some maintenance. So that's why it was kind of decided to go with this again. Well, the only reason I ask is on figure 2B, that 2A ditch that runs parallel with 47 from Huntington Road. I mean, that was just done this year. Obviously not by you guys, but. Yeah, that, that was done by the property owner. Uh, okay. So I'm not sure. It, like, it, it's, I, I was looking at some of the mapping too. It, it's like, the ownership of the ditches uh that's where i was asking about legal easements and stuff because some areas you know we have legal easements which you know uh we can go in there and do work other areas we don't and then it comes with the whole thing of uh using public money on private property comes into play if, if right you know it, it, it it's this whole ditch thing gets very complicated and very complex fast so we're trying to figure this whole thing out of, you know, in the end of the day, whose responsibility it really is. And, you know, we're in the process of doing that. Right. 
Like okay. I said, the, the board wants to look at it, you know, a lot deeper and we just haven't got there yet. We just decided, they just, we just talked about that a couple meetings ago. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. All right, Scott, I'll send the um, determination over to you. All right, thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. We hope to be before before you again in the near future to to do the next batch of these permitting, but um, but we'll we'll take it one at a time. Sounds good. Thank Have you. a nice night. Thank you all. Okay. Next on the agenda is public comment. Westy, come on up. So I believe you got an email today, and you guys stopped and looked this spring mm -hmm. at the ditch slash brook that runs from Searles down through towards East mm -hmm. Hadley Road. Yep. yep, yep. And we put in for a grant on that. We're approved of that now. I believe they sent you an email today yeah. to describe what type of letter or whatever mm -hmm. they need for. But I didn't know if you guys need to come look at it again or what. Um, it is APR. Yeah, but uh, trade. They sent you an email. Yeah. My brother told me to stop down just to see if he had any questions. Mm -hmm. about it. I don't see any issues with it. Um, yeah, this is just. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll just. It's. You it's, guys saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. From Searles End yeah. to that it's, pond. It's, yep. <laughs> Probably a 300 yard stretch there. Are Wait. you going to do anything behind the houses or no? You're just going to stop there? Or... I think mm -hmm. right at the border of ours yeah. is where it's plugged up. There's a couple of trees down there. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. I think because if you walk behind the houses, it's still got the swale there. It's more when they want us to put, leave a buffer strip along the brook as far as tillage and all that, you have all that grass that keeps laying down every right, year. Right, right, yeah. And then a couple of dead trees there, well, that plugs it all up. Yeah. I think theirs was all going to flow once well, like, you get your, we got ours cleaned up. Get it more you know, than it's 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 dry out now while it's dry. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, you can get it anywhere there now. Yeah, well, good. So but, is it something you can do right now? Um, I don't know. We've got... I don't. I he's going to meet with someone tomorrow. I don't know if it's a reimbursement grant or how quick mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But sounds good. We have a great try spell right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah right exactly. Mud. So in the mud. All right. Cool. Yeah, okay. But I think because I walked in there, I think you might have walked in. It the the ditch in behind the houses is still there. Right. But right where that meets our border, you have all that grass. Yeah. There's a couple of dead trees right Mike there. To that plug right it out. right at the boundary, basically. Right. I would just drain it right out. And we'll I think that's just going to suck once good. we get it going. Good. So. Okay. That's good. All right. You've been all right. Do, it all right. do it once. Do it right. Okay. Any other public comments? Other business. Thanks, Keith. Yeah. You know, for the conservation restriction? Okay. Okay. So, other business, yes? Yeah. that? What is okay. it? Other business? Yeah. 300 Venture Way Stormwater System Updates. Hey, Richard. Do you want to come over here so we could, the audio is better? Or the mic can pick up your microphone. I don't have much to say. That's okay. So basically, I guess we, we want to set up a, a time before we go off for a site visit. Is that what we're going to be doing? Yeah. yeah. So you had sent me the wetland delineation that was done, the updated wetland delineation. Right. Um. So I think it would be good to schedule a time for some of us to go out there and walk the site. And, and I have to say that, um, I mean, I think you were looking for it to be flagged. I, it, right now, the growth is quite high, and, and there's some. I, I can see some sets of tag, but I think mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to walk through it. Okay. Um, I mean, you've got the map, and so. I mean, I, I contacted the surveyor and he sent that drawing mm -hmm. that you seem to, to like, and I don't know that much about. <laughs> it's, yeah, so, so should I ask the surveyor again about tags or was the map Are they still sufficient? there? Are the, the, the flags from the original map still there? When I went by to look, I couldn't see them. Okay. But, but I think some of that may be just because well, I think there are things in the trees but I'm not sure whether some of the stuff is low enough that it's been overgrown. At this wow. point. Right. So, so is you. this an RDA and NOI? What are we doing here? So this was an this was an originally 
and ordered conditions, I believe, with an operation and maintenance plan for the stormwater system. But it wasn't maintained according to that plan, and so now it revegetated and became wetlands again. And so what you're asking is how to bring it back. I want to restore it to what it was. Yes. Yep. And so since it's wetlands, we can't just do that. We have to either issue an enforcement order requiring the work because it would be now it would be work in a resource area because it's wetlands again. So we can issue a friendly enforcement order that requires um, restoration to the original plan. But I think it would be a good idea to walk the site first and see what's changed and see where the wetland plots are mm. and, and compare it to the original stormwater system. Mm -hmm. And I can go back to the, the surveyor and ask, I mean, I can ask him again to, to look at to make sure what the flags are visible and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are, yeah. Am I yeah. in the email chain? I think because you had either you had sent me or he had sent me that those plans. But if I have his email, if we're in a group thread already, you could just send it to all of us and then I'll be in contact with the surveyor. That sounds good. Because yeah. there's always got to be there to explain everything. Yeah. Right. You can't just guess. You know, you're not going to know what the line is that you're so, so okay, so I'll put you and the surveyor in touch. Yes, yeah. the deal here. Yes, sounds good. Perfect. Perfect. So we're gonna set up at a later date then for a visit. Yeah, and maybe Gary. I mean, who wants to go on the site visit? Because if maybe just Gary wants to come or one I'll or take two. a look. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Care. <laughs> so maybe I'll be in touch with Gary and Brandon. Yep. To schedule a date. That's okay. Great. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Procon conservation restriction proposal. Yeah. Music of Terrace. Yeah. Yes. Or make and um, So I don't. Have you had a chance to read the description? I have it here. I haven't passed it no. out yet. Um, so, uh, uh, the Procon's family has owned the land in question for at least two generations, if not three. Um, at present, it's rented out. It's pretty much right at the corner as you come over the rail trail on your left. Um, it's the third or fourth tracks in yeah. um, north of the rail trail. And it's, um, so Ed uh, wanted to, it's getting up in the years, he wanted to make sure that um, it stayed in agriculture. It's too small for an APR. <laughs> and Probably not worth sort of the effort. Mm. <laughs> so what we're looking at doing is a conservation restriction with terms that are really for agricultural use. Um, it's, it's also important because it's part of the historic um, land use pattern mm -hmm. in the United States. And it's also visible from the rail trend. Um, and, um, so the, the provisions of the conservation restriction that have been drafting reflect those three resources. And the reason I'm coming to you now is because uh, I don't want to put a lot of effort into uh, getting conservation restriction drafted into the Boston to be reviewed. And to take up their time and my time, if this town's not interested in this. Basically, it's going to be the same as an APR, but we're not paying for it because it's not, it's not big enough. Right, right. right. So you could basically be an APR restriction, conservation restriction. I don't see why any of us would be against that. Uh, like, why we're here is no problem. So the conservation restriction, would that be purchased by the town? or It would be donated to the town. Oh, donated. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. great. I, and what she wants to talk about any further, I think she should make a motion to support this. 100%. I right, would look for a motion to support this as the Conservation Commission, so we can go to the select board. I will make a motion to accept the property given. Or to maybe to support? To, for the conservation to support the town to accept it. Yeah. 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 Brandon's okay, second, second by May. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, so we all support it. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I don't know uh, whether other bodies in the town want to look at this before I go to Boston. Um, yeah. Because it, um, it really can't be used for anything else. It's not, it's not right. a lot. It doesn't, oh, it's, it's like a landlocked piece pretty much. Like I said, if, if you can lock anything in and keep it. 
the way it is. That's yeah. why we're all sitting here. It's just going to keep it in agriculture. That's perfect. Beautiful. Are Thank you here for the select board already? No. Okay. no so, uh, your, your assistant to the town administrator, mm -hmm. um, uh, she has the paperwork okay. that she's going to circulate it to, to whoever she appoints. Great. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Okay. And, and I'll be really happy. To yeah. Enough. Yeah. Let, let, yeah. Great. let Mr. Pro kind of know that. Yeah. Absolutely. We're thrilled with this. Thank you. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Active projects updates. Oh, it's this. That's cool. Um, there's just a few small updates I wanted to give. This to keep you all in the loop. Um, for the 315 Russell Street site, the Subaru reconstruction, um, they reached out to me about adding another propane tank next to the existing propane tank that's the exact same size, and it's no closer to any of the resource areas. Um, so I said it would be fine. And then, um, oh, I guess he was in already, but um, Bruce Stedman from the Amherst Conservation Commission, and he's also part of the Fort River Watershed Associ Association, is coordinating a group of different people and the towns that are in the Fort River watershed to get together. I think it's like three meetings um, to just coordinate and collaborate and share resources with each other. They reached out to me and I said, I'd go to the meetings um, and see, you know, what's in it, um, what, what that's all about. So that'll be happening in October and I'll bring back any updates if there's any cool happenings or interesting things um, that I feel like affect our town. Um, and yeah, that's all the, Project updates that I have. Okay, sweet. Tree, tree, tree removal policy. So, I think Brandon and Steve, you had some suggestions last time for the tree removal policy. I didn't write up a new draft, but I just wanted to go over for Gary and I think Gordon, who weren't here. Um, we talked about adding a provision that requires a site visit before approving or administratively approving a tree removal. Um, and if the board thinks it's hazardous, they can go ahead and approve it if they want to require the property owner to get an arborist to come out there and review it, they're also, with, they, we would also be within our rights to do that. So that's something that I'm gonna add. Yep. Um, and then I think Steve, you wanted to get rid of the mitigate or the replacement requirements for removing a hazard tree. The what requirements? Replacement requirements. Replacement. So you won't have yep. to plant another tree if you're removing a hazard tree. Well, if they want to. <clears throat> Leave it off. Right. right. Not mandatory. No, I think that makes the most sense. I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. So this is going to basically give us jurisdiction to cut down trees in a wetland. It's going to, no, it's, it's going to give it's, policy. It's, like, it's going to create kind of a map. A map, yeah. So we treat everybody the same, and so if somebody has a hazard tree, we approach it, you know, in the same way. And it's only going to allow maybe like I, I don't think we agree on the number of trees that we want to allow administrative um, approval for. I think every situation is going to be different, right? Yeah. We require that site visit initially, anyway. So okay, you're going to be there. All right, that one's bad. That one's bad. You know, I'm thinking. I don't. Yeah. I think we should set a threshold for like. Oh, that's too many trees for us to just say you can cut down. Depends on the size of the property. You know. Oh, that's true too. Like a trolley. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's one thing. But if it's, if it's twenty acres of, oh, I would. Woods. I don't want. You to. can't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We're going to determine to cut the trees down just by whether they're dead or living or leaning. So I think that's where we're going to you go know, in like, with the hazardousness. So like if it poses a hazard of people or property, that's one thing we should just It's kind of a combination of common sense. That too. And if we're really unsure about it, then it's up to the landowner to get an arborist there to report back to us. I think that's kind of what we're... If we get an arborist involved, I think it'd be a good idea. I don't think they're that expensive anyways. Oh, I mean, some guy, a tree guy is going to come give you a free estimate, but right. no one's going to do that unless they have the green light to if we give them that too, you know? Yep. But... Like you said, common sense. And you can see a tree. If it's lean and it's already over the house, and then you know half the stumps in a wetland, then yeah, you don't want to be responsible for buying that house when it comes down, saying that we can take it down. Well, but, that's you know, another thing. I mean, responsibility is <clears throat> going right. to be a big, big deal on this too. I mean, if we say no, and then the tree comes down. The best thing is that all these people are actually coming to us and asking first. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. that's that's the biggest thing. If we make it too difficult, no one's going to do that. Exactly. They're just going to do what they want anyway. So. I think if we make the, the terms realistic and approachable, I don't see why anyone has a problem with that. So, no. And if we say it's dead and they say it's not, 
Well, we say it's vice versa. Yeah, then get an arborist. Then you get an arborist and yeah, let him decide. Let him decide, and then yep. we can we'll work with them. I think uh, get it done. We as a board can make our own decisions. DEP is not going to question us too much. No, right. They're yeah. not going to come out and look at trees. No, right. So I think that's good. Okay. Cool. Bylaw updates. So I did pick out some of the example bylaws in the Hadley bylaw. I know Stevie wanted one, um, and I only printed a few because I didn't want to use that much paper but <laughs> i know you have your ipad so yeah. you have the email you ha have i have a couple them. copies of them did you email me i think i emailed it to everybody yeah, yeah, I'll just put it so where you got one so this isn't this is the hadley bylaw and then um the hadley bylaw regulations and then two examples of different towns how they approach the wetlands bylaws so it, it's southampton which just has a bylaw they don't have regulations and then Sunderland, which has a bylaw and regulations. Um, so I included both of those in, in this little packet. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of food for thought of um, just starting to think about updating the bylaws and what we want that to look like, since our bylaw is pretty out of date. And these are towns that I feel like are similar. In, I mean, they're not mm -hmm. big towns. They're not cities or anything. Um, and they have these pretty robust wetlands bylaws. So... It's definitely feasible for us to do something like this. And I just wanted to put it in front of you um, to get your thoughts. So give it a read when you have a chance um, and we could talk about it. I'll put it in the porcelain reading room. What? I'll put it in my porcelain reading room. <laughs> Take time. Right? Okay. Too much information. Bills. Any bills? Nope. No bills. Any uh, minutes you need to watch? Yep. Oh, the September minutes I have with me. I wasn't able to send them out because I just spent them today. Let's see what I um, like. Sure. I mean, I have them send a bunch of talkies, so I don't yeah. need them back. But if you don't want it, I'll just recycle it. Oh, okay. Yeah. To me, yeah. okay. So, um, I'll look for a motion except the minutes September 10th, 2024. And make a motion to accept motion. I'll second it. Brandon, any further discussion? Uh, I will not vote because I wasn't at the meeting. You four can all vote. Yep, any uh, uh Gordon, Steve, I was in order. Okay, four of the board members voted. I abstained. Oh, or did you abstain also? You were here, yeah, okay. So, oh, oh, I, I, so, I, so, Steve, Ray, Brandon, you got majority with three. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Not hearing anything else from anybody in the audience? Zoom? Can't really hear anybody from Zoom. I'll uh, entertain a, a motion for adjournment. I'll make it. Second. Oh, it makes a motion. Steve seconds it. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.